Okay, so we have now looked at a couple of different views of how testing looks like, what you can do. Uh, but by far the most common categorization, I would say, is to follow the V model, which we have covered in the process lecture. So you have uh, the specification on top. So you specify your requirements, your goals of the system. Uh, then you design, you build an architecture, uh, and then you implement. So those are your system activities, your, what are you going to produce. Uh, and then on the right side of the V, you have the corresponding testing quality assurance activities. And then usually down here you have something that is called unit testing. In the middle you have integration testing. And on top you have the system testing. And they all have their own goals. They cannot really replace each other, so they're actually quite important. And we'll just quickly go into all of them, and then later on we'll dive especially into unit testing, since it's the most common way of testing in industry today. Uh, and it's also really where it starts on a developer level. So this needs to be good in order to really uh, enable a working system, I would say. So first of all, unit testing is uh, looking directly at the implementation activities of a developer, so it's testing a single unit of a system, a small part of the system. For example, if you are in an object-oriented language, it could be a class, for instance. And since units, these small parts, usually do not fulfill any requirements, uh, the main focus of unit testing is defect testing. So you try to cover as many cases as possible in order to expose errors anomalies and so on. Um, another thing that is very common is that unit testing is automated. So you have scripts, tools that run automatically on the press of a button or on a git push or so on uh, and everything runs and it directly shows you what the results are. So you don't need anyone manually to do anything. Uh, and finally something that's also not uncommon up here but particularly common in unit testing is what is called regression testing. So you have a number of tests that are designed to be quick and whenever something changes in the system you run all of them so that everything is fine but as soon as you accidentally change something you directly get sort of a warning saying now something happened, now we have an error, it wasn't here before so maybe we should look at that. Uh, and a very common technique is actually to say whenever you find a bug in your system you write a unit test that reproduces it uh, and then you fix it and then the regression test, the test passes but then if the bug ever comes again it would directly fail again. Uh, and the, the motivation behind that is often that bugs happen because you have changed things that you have forgotten about or that were working well before and you just don't realize. And if you don't have regression tests, that can sometimes take a very long time for you to realize that. So this is an extremely important part uh, of testing overall, but also in particular of unit testing, kind of reproducing old bugs and always running these tests again. Uh, integration testing is, well, it's concerned with the design, so we basically put different pieces, different units of the system together, uh, and we assume that unit testing is done in a good way, so we don't have to look at the unit level, we have to look at uh, the integration, and what we ha usually have there is we test the interfaces, we test the communication uh, between different components, and the reason why this is important is that, for example, interfaces are misused, someone doesn't understand them in the right way, so they just call it in a way that is not correct, that would lead to errors, uh, or they have actually not been decided really, so people just do whatever they feel like or what they think is correct, and then there are problems, uh, so interfaces are, are a big thing to test. And the other thing are quality properties like timing uh, or performance in general, and probably also things like memory access. So you might, for example, in your unit you are accessing the memory in a correct way, uh, but then if you have multiple components they might access a shared memory and then suddenly this leads to an error. This is nothing you would realize at the unit level because as long as you only have one unit everything is fine, but as soon as there are more components accessing the same place 
in a strange way, you could get errors. Similarly, timing, you can of course check your, your algorithm, for example, is it performant, uh, but often because of the way the interfaces work, the communication between components, you really start seeing these timing and performing is uh, performance issues at integration level. Uh, also, if you have delays, for example, messages arrive in the wrong order. Uh, these are the things you typically see up here. And uh, integration testing is also usually, or let's not talk about integration testing, but integration in general, this is a place where usually a lot of problems happen. So everything is fine here. As soon as you put things together, it starts really breaking. And the problem here is, in contrast to the unit level, it's quite often hard to debug to understand why there is a certain behavior. For example, think of, of issues like memory access and timing, order of messages. Uh, those are usually things that are really hard to figure out why they happen. For instance, a, a timing error or a memory access error might only happen once every thousand executions maybe because it depends a bit on the operating system, on, on the runtime of the machine. So. Uh, these things are not at all easy to debug, and that's happening at integration testing, usually. Uh, system testing then, well, it's obviously the whole system. That's where the name comes from, including all the dependencies. So if you, for example, depend on a database, you depend on some kind of external cloud service, you extend or, uh, depend on some library, all those things are somehow included in there. Uh, and it has to do, it's on the level of the specification. So very often you do, for instance, validation testing that you test whether the requirements are fulfilled, you have a certain use case, you try to execute that use case. Um, defect testing is of course also possible here, you just try to put uh, weird input in and see what happens, for example. Uh, System integration testing can also be automated, but it's usually much, much harder. Uh, and something we haven't talked much about yet is also that bugs very often, errors very often mask each other. So some kind of error happens, your test fails, but that's actually not the only error. It's just that as soon as the first error happens, uh, the system stops. But if it would continue running, there would probably be four, five, six more bugs coming. Uh, and that's an issue on all levels, but in particular on system testing. If there are a lot of things wrong, you will only see the first one because then the execution stops. Uh, and that's often called a mask in behavior, which is also a reason why, why inspection uh, is sometimes preferred because there you can still see all follow-up errors uh, if you read it correctly. So these are essentially the, the different testing levels that you very often hear. Later on, we will look at the, a bit at the user side. There's also above that something that is called acceptance testing. That's basically whether the user likes it, accepts it or not. Um, but this is another aspect of testing. We won't cover system and integration testing so much here, but we'll now dive a bit into unit tests uh, and look at how do we actually design that, what kind of tests should we write, uh, and issues like that.